Good afternoon, everybody. Let's get started here. I hope everybody's doing well. Um, welcome to uh, Web Forms uh, once again, except this time we're creating a listing. I get to do the um, I get to do these uh, uh, Zoom meetings on uh, some pretty dry subjects. Um, I, I wish I could make these much more exciting than uh, than I, I, uh, I, I could do, but I, I don't really know how I can make something like this exciting other than hopefully it's a, a good and positive learning experience uh, for everybody out there. Um, it, it's, it's not necessarily a lot of fun uh, because it's just, you know, down to the nitty gritty of paperwork, um, electronic paperwork in this case, uh, about the real estate business. And as we all know, this is a, a paperwork intensive business, whether we are doing it electronically or actually doing it uh, by paper. So. Um, in, in this session here, I hope to show everybody who's attending um, how to create a, a listing through web forms. And uh, to be honest, it's, it's not uh, overly difficult. Um, it, it's basically fill in the blanks to a large extent, just like uh, whether you'd be doing it on paper or not uh, from the packages at your office, which reminds me that you do have a couple of ways to do this. One is to go through the web forms program that we're about to go through, but also don't forget that there are packages available in all the offices um, that have the listings, um, paperwork all stapled together for you with everything that you need. And they are available, um, I know in, in Richmond Hill here, in our filing cabinets, I'm not sure where they are, I'm probably in Thornhill, something similar. And if anybody's from Newmarket or Bradford, then of course it's probably something similar as well, but the front desk could always uh, direct you to where the hard paper copies are if necessary. But this is going to be uh, more talking about uh, how to do this in, in web forms, of course. So um, the first step of course, is that you need to get to the Toronto Real Estate Board. And um, uh, in the Toronto Real Estate Board, we've signed in here then you have your web forms and AuthentiSign, all right? You click on web forms and AuthentiSign. And hopefully my internet is not too slow here and it's going to work okay today. And everybody should have something that looks similar. Mine is probably looking a little bit different than everybody else's because I've got all sorts of stuff in here. And, um, but you should have these dot these squares on your um on your uh, laptop on your screen and it says create a transaction so you click on create a transaction and the transaction screen opens up now this is the the way that um web forms has created the fill-in format for whether you're doing an offer or whether you are doing a listing, it takes you through the same steps. And I, I think for some of you out there, I saw some of the names have done your own offers on web forms and you find it confusing because there's some sections that seem to don't make sense. It's because they've used the same five steps to create the listing as they do uh, to create an offer. And this is one of them. If you were going to create an offer, you would create a transaction exactly the same here. You press this button here the create transaction and this comes up and then you would enter in your address and we're going to enter in an address of 123 uh, anywhere. Okay. And we're going to click on template and when you click on the template button, you get a drop down menu and if you were going to create an offer, you would come down to one of these purchases, but we're not going to do that. We're going to do the listing instead. And let's do a residential freehold for sale. You can see they're all listed here. It doesn't matter um, what kind of property you are, a commercial residential condo for an assignment, for a lease, for a sale, um, residential condo, uh, actually, it's in there twice for a sale, assignment, for lease, for freehold, and for sale. So whichever one you're doing, you choose the one that you want to do, okay? The reason why you need to do, uh, the reason you need to choose this is so that you get the correct MLS data form. 
So if you're going to do a lease, you have to do this one. If you're going to do a commercial, this one. A condo, this one. Residential freehold for sale. Okay. Now, here's the first really confusing part, is what some agents have tried to do is they have tried to import data from a previous MLS listing. In the web forms, you cannot do that, okay? This is the same screen that we're looking at, this create transaction screen is the same screen that you would look, out, look at if you were going to do an offer. If you were going to do an offer, you would select the source, the Toronto Real Estate Board. You would select what you were doing and it's a freehold property and you'd enter the MLS number in here, okay? But since you can't copy from a previous MLS number, you can't do this, okay? It won't let you do it, all right? So just forget this import data section here. Just absolutely forget about it when you are doing a listing because you can't use it. You cannot import data from a previous MLS listing when you are creating a listing, all right? So just the listing, residential freehold for sale. I, I would do the address. I just put it anywhere, but you know, you'll put the address of the property in there and you're going to add yourself as the listing salesperson because that's who you are and you press create. And it comes up with the details steps one of five. This is exactly the same details as if you were doing an offer. They use the same sheets, okay? So you can put in some information in here and you could put in 123 anywhere. Oops, 123 and then anywhere. Force of habit there. And um, uh, property type, you can certainly down arrow that and it's a residential property. Um, there is no unit that you can put in the city um, I don't know, Richmond Hill. Uh, there is no MLS number, Ontario. You can put in the postal code, whatever it is, I just made it up. You can put in the frontage direction, let's say north. You can put in the property width, 50 feet. You can put in the property depth, 100 feet. If you know the assessment roll number, you can put that in. Lot size code is feet, right? If you have the legal description, which you need, just think about what you need. If you were going to be doing a listing, the legal description, one, two, plan, 45R, et cetera, okay? any comments and the list price. And once again, this is often the difficulty that people have um, when they're looking at these screens for an offer is that this stuff comes up too. So hopefully this clears up some of that confusion. So the list price is 800,000. Oops, not quite that much. Present use, residential, property includes now, Mm, let's just say hot water tank, property excludes chandelier, that kind of thing. And you just fill in the things that you might have to put in, okay? So pretty basic details here, and then you click next. The contract date is the date that the listing is going to be signed. The expiry date. And of course, uh, for an MLS listing, you have to have at least two months. So we'll do it for two months. There is no offer date here. Remember that what we're looking at here is the same wizard to create an offer as it is to do a listing. So there is no offer date. There's no irrevocable. There's no acceptance date. There's no additional deposit. There's no closing date. But there could be a possession date because the possession date is when the sellers want to sell. And we'll just put in, I don't know, November 12th. So what I'm trying to show everybody here is, is the same 
wizard, the same five steps are used whether you're creating an offer or you're creating a listing at the beginning. All right. Contacts. Now, I tried to get a hold of Aaron for this, and I don't understand why my computer is coming up with two contacts here for the Century 21 Heritage Group, and I did not get an answer in time. So I'm just going to delete the first one. Yep, I want to delete that, so I only have one. Okay. Do I want to add somebody here in a contact? Yeah, I do. I want to new, create a new transaction contact, and the type is... He is a seller, and the seller's name is John, and the last name is seller. And the email address, I'm just gonna use my own email address. And if you had anything preferred, you could add this stuff in here, okay? So this is where you can add your seller's names, John Seller, okay, and there it is. So once again, if you were doing an offer, you'd be adding somebody as a buyer here. Next. What forms do we want to use? So let's start with the listing agreement. And here it is. So it's between the brokerage, which has been filled in already. You'll see that our telephone number is not in here. And the reason why is because if you're in Richmond Hill, you're gonna have one number. If you're in Thornhill, you're gonna have another. Newmarket, you're gonna have another. So you can start to fill this stuff in just like normal on any listing agreement, okay? It took in, um, uh, commencing, uh, remember we had the commencement dates, it's taken that, it's taken our price, it does not know what the commission is, so of course everybody out there wants to make at least 6% commission, right? And the cooperating broker gets 2.5, and the holdover period 90 days, all pretty basic things on filling in the listing agreement, it's all pretty normal. All right, it's got my name as the listing agent here. It's got my name as a de declaration of insurance. It's got the signature of the seller name and it's got the seller's name down here as well because we entered that already, okay? So since we have that done, here at the toolbar at the top side of the toolbar, you can see here you have file and you get a drop down menu and this one here, you can simply save it. If you want to be careful, you can save your document. Though web forms is pretty automatic that it saves everything. I'm an old guy. I like to save stuff as I move along just so that I'm sure, but web forms does save things as you're going along. So now we've completed the listing agreement just like a normal listing agreement. There's really nothing too fancy about it. Go back to your dashboard, okay? We're at 123 Anywhere Street, so we're here. And what other ones do we need? We need, for any listing, you need the loading, please wait. To do a listing, you need Certainly you need a working with a realtor form. And here's the working with a realtor. And acknowledged by John Seller. And as a seller, we understand that This group is representing my interests and the signature is John Seller. Right. And go back to your dashboard. And the last one that we want to see here is the MLS data information form. Now what we have seen here, because we do have an office in Hamilton, all right, do be sure 
that you're reading this carefully and you do not choose, unless there's an agent here from Hamilton watching this, of course, um, uh, you want to use, if you're in Toronto, you want to use the MLS data information form. If you're in Hamilton, you would use this one, of course, the residential data input form. So be careful when you're choosing your data input form, if you're in Toronto, that you don't choose Hamilton. We've seen this, it doesn't work, okay? You would have to redo it. So you choose your MLS data information form. And here it is. Here's your MLS data information form. And the MLS data information form is exactly the same as the MLS data information form that you would have if it was a paper copy. Now you can see from the uh, wizard that we filled in the assessment roll number. Of course, I don't have enough numbers here. I had done that just to show you, okay? But then it's pretty cool from here because for area, you can just simply select York, the municipality, uh, select Richmond Hill, I guess, and the community. Nice little drop down um, men, um, menus here for this. Mill Pond. The street name has been put in already because we had it. The street abbreviation, uh, well, we'll call it Anywhere Avenue. And it has the postal code that we put in. It's fronting on the north side. It's taken our legal description already. Okay, but if you wanted to add something, you certainly can. If you decided it wasn't on the north side and you decided it's on the south side, you can change things. There's no problem there, okay? The lot frontage, for some reason, it did not pick up our lot frontage, 50 by 100. And if you remember, and if some of you have been around and have tried your own offers, you know that web forms is not perfect. When you enter an MLS number to do an offer, it picks up most of the, um, data, but it doesn't pick up all the data. And it's the same kind of thing here that it picks up most of the data. I've done these before with lot frontage and lot depth. It's picked it up. This time, for whatever reason, it hasn't picked it up. But of course, as a professional real estate salesperson, you people are all double checking your work. Lot irregularities, you can put down, uh, you know, uh, east side 105 feet, if you wanted to do that. You can put in acres if you want. Directional cross streets, uh, Young, Elgin Mills, really good speller as you can see. Taxes, you fill in the taxes, 50,000 is a little much. Uh, tax year 2020. And it's picked up our contract commencement date, our expiry date, it's picked up our possession date, possession remarks, flexible, holdover days from the listing agreement was 90, and it's got the seller's name there already. And then you go through the MLS data, just like you normally would. It's a detached two-story brick home if, if it was a, 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 a property of tied land, here's where you put the fees in. If it's a link home, exactly the same if, if, if uh, you were doing it on paper. Garage, detached, uh, to the driveway is, oh, we'll make it circular because it's a nice place. And it's four. Total parking spaces is six. No pool. Waters Municipal, it's a sewer, unknown special designation. All, all the exact same stuff as you would be doing before is all here. Uh, room three, that's a, that's a little small for rooms, isn't it? Eight, three, one, one times four, on the second floor. I'm not going to get too carried away with doing all these. Well, there is a basement, my goodness. Uh, no gas, forced air, central air. And you can put in your rooms. I'm not going to do it. It'll take me forever if I put in rooms. And these conditions, I'm sorry, these comments are exactly the same as 
once again, the paper forms that you've been used to using. Uh, wonderful location, et cetera, et cetera. Remarks, fridge, stove, washer, dryer, hot water tank, because we said it was owned before. Um, all curtains, a family pet. All goes with the place. They don't want the dog anymore. And uh, remarks for brokerages. Uh, please include form 801, Schedule B, all the rest of the stuff that you normally put into one of these things. Listing brokerage is in already. It's got our phone number. It doesn't have our fax number. It didn't pick it up for some reason. So do fill that in because it's a requirement. 883.1. And commission to cooperating broker, 2.5. SPIS is no. Yes, 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 no, no. We'll say it's owner occupied and we're going to upload our own listing. And so then it goes on to the rest of the MLS data form. And it shows if it's a cottage or rural waterfront, you can put this stuff in here as well. And then it's got the different lakes if that's necessary for you to do that. Okay. And you can go back to here. And once again, you can save your document. Go back to your dashboard. So what have we got so far? So far, we've got our MLS data information form. We've got our working with the realtor and we've got our listing agreement. Okay. Now you can see if you scroll down here, there's many more forms that you can get right now. You can get your consent to advertise to get the seller to sign it. All right, you can get your residential information checklist filled out. You can, if it's multiple offers, you would use a form 652, a mortgage verification, seller's direction re-property offers. This is one that's being used quite a bit today because it has the, um, uh, what to do in a multiple offer situation. Are there any conditions in the offer for seller's acknowledgement that the seller might need one? Um, have you given the privacy and real estate transaction brochure to your client? So all of the forms that you would normally need are in here. Okay. Just have to pick which ones you want. All right. I'm doing the three basic ones here to show you today on the three. These are, let's face it, the most common ones, but you know, even way down at the bottom here, there's FinTrack is in here somewhere that you can fill out the FinTrack forms. There's everything in here that you would normally get in a paper package, except it's all on the electronic format already. Okay, so folks, um, it's really, really simple. I, I hope everybody found that to be very, very simple, but now what? now what? Now what happens? So now you have all the documents that you want to do, right? That you need your seller to sign. And so just like it is, if you're doing an offer, you choose one of the documents. I chose the listing agreement, right? And we send it to AuthentiSign. And here we go to AuthentiSign. So you sh this is not a, a course on AuthentiSign, but I'll do it really quickly. Keep it as sign in line. So the signing participants sign in order. Don't do simul sign. Don't do accept counter offer. Don't do any of the advanced options. Click on participants. And so far, we've got John Smolders and we have John Seller. Now, do I have to sign the documents as the listing salesperson? And the answer is yes, I sure do. And so I'm just going to click on myself here. And I'm going to change me from being a reviewer to a remote signer so that I can just do it electronically as well. Why should I print it out and waste the paper and cut down another tree when I can do this electronically? Okay. So I'm just going to change, change mine to a remote signer. I'm going to check John Seller to see, to make sure he's a remote signer and yes. And we're going to add 
Okay, now the way this is set up right now is when this is sent out to be signed, I'm going to get it first. I do not want it first. Okay, I want the seller to sign it first. So all you have to do is get onto the seller's name and just drag this up and it switches places. See that? Just drag and it'll switch the places. So I want the seller to come first and me to come second. You can see here that we only have the listing agreement. So we have to add the documents. And from here, we look for our, our file here, the 123 Anywhere forms, because that's where we are. And what do we need? We need the MLS data information form, and we need the working with the realtor form, the listing agreement we have already. If you had the other ones filled out, you would just select all the forms that you want here. We're gonna add those. And you can see here that what's gonna happen here is that they're going to sign the listing agreement first, the MLS data agreement second, and the working with a realtor third. Well, that's not correct, is it? The working with a realtor should be first, the listing agreement should be second, and the MLS data information form should be third. Next step, of course, is design. And here's our first page. Of course, this is the word we check the signing. And what's happened here? So this happens with every working with a realtor brochure, whether you're doing an offer or you're creating a listing. The computer web forms basically does not know if you're going to represent their interests as a client or as a customer, all right? In this case here, and most listings, not all, but most listings are um, listing agreements or client documents. And you can see what's happened here is that the computer has put an initial in for JS, John Seller, in both places because the web forms does not know if the person is a client or a customer. So to get rid of one, you click on the one that you don't want. All right. Actually, I'm sorry. I'm going to back out of that for a moment. I'm sorry. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to move this, get this out of the way so that I can click on the one I need. And now I'm going to delete this. So it was simply do that, and there's a little garbage can right here, and that's how you can delete the one you don't want. And then if you want to, you can move this back to where it was, or you can leave it where it was, okay? Just like anything, you have to double check what is happening in your documents. Here it is again. You've got an MLS listing, great, but it also put in the initials for an exclusive listing. So you're going to click on that and delete it. And, and Web Forms does the same thing if you're creating an offer. It places initials sometimes in places that it shouldn't or it's missing initials where it should be. It's just not that smart. It's you guys that have to double check the work. Is this listing for more than six months? No. So I'm going to get rid of this. Of course, this is correct. Initials of sellers, wonderful. Initial of sellers, wonderful. Once again, it does or does not. We're gonna get rid of that, right? And we've got John Seller, we've got my name here. It's missing my name here. We're gonna go through my name in a minute. And it's got the freehold information. Here we go, John Seller. John Seller, John Seller, how wonderful. So let's go back to the top now, because in the upper right hand side here, I can change my name to John Smolders as the listing salesperson. We're going to start at the top. I don't need to sign the working with a realtor brochure. However, I do need to, where are my initials? for the listing brokerage. And again, it 
and I need to sign here. And I can put in the date, though it auto dates already. This is not a course on AuthentiSign. I'm just showing you quickly how to do this. Oh, I missed John Seller down here, didn't I? So I can go back to here, change to John Seller, sign here. And I can drop the date down, though it does automatically do it. And I think that's it. Right. And so then, of course, you press Next. And I can customize the invitation if I want to. I can send a subject and stuff to myself and myself because I'm the seller and the agent. Of course, that's a little confusing, but you can add stuff here. I'll save that. And I send the invitations. OK, so what have I done? I'm just going to go back to here. So what I've done here, ladies and gentlemen, very, very simply, I have created the working with the realtor brochure. I created the listing agreement and I created the MLS data form. I created the AuthentiSign signatures and I sent it off to my seller client all within about 35 minutes while I'm talking to explain it to you. It's a really, really, really simple, simple format. Really easy to do, really good with COVID uh, to, to figure out how to do this. No question about it, okay? Now, here's the pitfall. And it's the same pitfall, the same downfall, whatever you want to call it, the same problem, call it, as sending an offer. Okay, Mr. Seller, sign here, sign here, sign here, sign here, sign here. And the poor seller has no clue what they are signing. Just because you are doing this electronically does not take away from the fact that you should be taking the time, whether it's over the phone, whether you're doing it by a, a bomb bomb or whether you're doing it by some kind of Facebook group or whatever, you should be explaining to the seller what they are signing. Okay, don't forget that, it's so important. Proper paperwork is so important. Um, I know that Isabel and I have drilled it into a lot of you guys already. When we end up in front of RICO with a complaint or we end up in front of the Toronto Real Estate Board with a complaint, the first thing that those people look at is the quality of paperwork. For goodness sake, check your paperwork all the time, please. So I know this has been a very, very quick, um, quick meeting. I want to say one more thing about this. So what happens when you create a listing in web forms? What happens next? So what happens next is that you now have created a listing in web forms. Well, all, it, all you have to do next is send an email to, the, to your front desk and say, I have a listing in my web forms for address, and you put down the address in your email. The front desk can find your listing, all right? They can upload it as a, um, oh my goodness, the word just went right out of my head, as a uh, sample listing, okay? If you request it, they can send the sample listing to you, what the MLS data sheet will work out, will, will look like, okay, for your approval. And assuming you approve it, you send the data sheet back to the front, I'm sorry, you send an email back to the front desk and simply say, would you please upload it, it's great. And they simply upload it for you. It's a really, really simple process. If you don't want them to send you a proof of the MLS data sheet, you simply say, please upload my listing. And they will upload your listing. Of course, you have to send them the pictures um, for them to upload as well. Uh, but as far as them uploading the listing, you don't have to hand in any paperwork. They can see everything that you have done electronically, very, very simply. And they can easily upload the listing for you. All you have to do is indicate whether you'd like to see a proof of the MLS data sheet before they upload it, or if they don't, or if you don't want to see a proof. Okay. 
And um, that's it. I've done it all. Um, it's a really, really, really simple process to do. Uh, I personally think it's easier than the paper. I think it goes faster because of all the drop down menus that you have choices for. And I highly recommend you try it. Um, if you're living in your own house or if you're renting in your own house, do a listing for your own house, send it to yourself, see what it looks like so you can check it out. And um, um, that way you practice always makes perfect. And that way um, you will uh, know for the time you have to do a listing with your client, you save the, uh, you save the uh, possibility of COVID getting in the way because you've done everything electronically, which your client will probably appreciate as well. Everybody have a great afternoon. All the best. Take care.